All right, so we are today going to talk about two sets of notes. Alexander the Great, Fill in the Blank Notes Part 2, and then also I'm going to go over this list of reasons Alexander can be considered great, and maybe some reasons why Alexander should be known as the not-so-great. All right, but first, Fill in the Blank Notes Part 2. Just a little more character information on Alexander. So, he grew up brave, strong, intelligent, with strong leadership, as I told you in Fill in the Blank Notes number one. He becomes, in the military, a leader at age 16. So he showed those qualities early on in life. So this next thing is a legend. Um, there's no proof that it actually happened, but it's a legend that's told that goes along with Alexander's character. So one day, Philip II brought home a black horse, but the horse threw the king off of him and refused to be ridden. So Philip was going to get rid of the horse. Alexander is watching the situation, and he says to his dad, no, I want the horse. I want to keep the horse. Like, don't get rid of him. And Philip says, probably in a way that your parents have talked to you sometimes, well, if you can ride the horse, you can keep it, thinking Alexander is not going to be able to ride the horse. But Alexander is like, all right. I'm ready for this challenge. According to legend, this is what happened. The horse instantly calmed down when Alexander got close. And Alexander noticed that the problem was that the horse didn't like seeing his shadow. So by turning the horse away from his shadow, Alexander was able to ride it without a problem. So the horse was scared of its own shadow, but Philip didn't know that. Philip just thought like, oh, nobody can ride this horse. But Alexander, being taught by very smart people and being a smart person himself, was able to see the big picture and figure out the problem. Because sometimes, as you know, when there's problems, it's sometimes it's not like cut and dry. Sometimes there's another reason why something is happening. This horse was named Bucephalus. And... According to the same legend, Bucephalus only allowed Alexander to ride him, and the horse would lower his body down to the ground like a camel when Alexander got on, supposedly. This is all legend stuff, but it leads to kind of the, the legendary tale of Alexander as a person. When the horse was too old to be in battle, Alexander would still ride Bucephalus close to the battlefield um, and then switch to a younger horse. So that's also why the statue I showed you yesterday, um, maybe it wasn't yesterday, I forget when you're watching these notes. In Fill in the Blank Notes Part 1, um, Alexander on that statue is on a horse, and that's Bucephalus. Now, I know some of you already are like, thank goodness we don't have to write all this, because if we were in class, I'd hear some, I'd hear this. Ah, because I know, how dare I make you write. But now, look, you just have to listen to me, the crazy person telling you notes on the computer. Um, <laughs> so, some qualities historians say Alexander showed in the story are observation and determination, meaning he observed the issue and he was determined to solve it. Willingness to give in to the needs of others in order to gain ultimate control. He doesn't try and force the horse to be ridden, he sees the issue and works around it. Compassion. He cares for this horse and also respect. He respects this horse even when the horse is too old to be in battle. All right. Alexander's education is done, as you learned, by Aristotle. Aristotle is hired to teach Alexander when Alexander is 13 years old. And he taught him all different things about literature, political science, biology, um, a bunch of stuff. And actually, he also taught Alexander something that you learned this year in sixth grade social studies, and that is the story of the Iliad. Um, and Alexander loved the character of Achilles, and supposedly he always had a copy of the Iliad with him at all times. Now, while on military campaigns, we talked about this the other day too, Alexander would observe the plants and animals of the region and report back to Aristotle his findings. He even would tag wild deer 
to study their lifespans. And what that is is like put a mark on the deer so that um, they could observe the deer and know which deer is which and know how long deer lived. Today they do it electronically um, a lot of times, but he did it the old fashioned way. All right. Alexander in battle is somebody that shows great bravery. And there was this battle with the Persians um, at Caronia that a crazy story happens to him. So while his troops were getting catapults and battering rams ready, a large bird is up in the sky and dropped a rock on Alexander's head because from high up, Alexander with his helmet on looked like a tortoise. So Alexander wasn't harmed, but he probably got a concussion, like physically harmed um, in terms of like anything you could see, but he probably had a concussion from that. So that's going into the battle. Next. In the battle, Alexander is stabbed, but keeps fighting. Then he's hit by an arrow in the shoulder. Keeps fighting. They have to drag him off the battlefield while a doctor gets the arrow out. And Alexander is told, oh, you need to, to rest. And Alexander's like, nope. And he goes back and he continues to fight. And while fighting, this part's pretty gross, the bandages come loose and blood starts pouring out under his armor while he's fighting. And the blood loss causes him to faint. Now, they pull him out of the battle. And while he's recovering on the sidelines, he's still directing his troops. So Alexander is not one of these leaders that, you know, leads from the mountaintop or, you know, is back at home commanding things. He is out there fighting with his troops, so his troops respect him a lot. Now, this next thing is another legend, supposedly, about Alexander. So Alexander solved this ancient mystery called the Gordian Knot. So what the Gordian Knot was was this. It was a puzzle that was located in the city-state of Gordium in what is today Turkey, so Persian territory, as Alexander's conquering, um, there's this wagon that was tied with a whole bunch of knots that no one could solve. And the oracle had said anyone that could untie the knots would rule all of Asia. So Alexander's like, all I have to do is untie the knots, and the people of Gordium are like, yes, this is the Gordian knot, and if you untie it, the prophecy says you're going to rule all of Asia. And Alexander's like, that's it? I just have to untie the knot. And they're like, yes. So he takes out his sword and cuts the knot. Everyone else tried to untie it manually. Alexander, thinking outside the box, is like, I just have to untie it. Cutting it unties it. Boom. So then the people there are like, oh my gosh, the prophecy says you're going to rule all of Asia. Now, this next thing is a little sad story. Alexander on his way to, to Persopolis, the Persian capital city, comes across thousands of Greek slaves. Um, these were Greek troops from Ionia. So remember how the Ionians rebelled against the Persians and then the Persians like shut down the rebellion? So the Persians made the Ionian rebels their slaves. And it's pretty sad what they did to them. So they had like marks on their hands, their feet, the ears, their noses. You could tell like they were whipped. They were just treated really badly. Um, and Alexander sees them and he says to them, you are Greeks. You are from my land. And supposedly he cries and he says, I will send you back to Greece. But they refuse because they're ashamed of their battle scars. They're ashamed of what happened to them. So instead... Alexander gives them money, seeds, animal, clothing, and shelter. Basically, everything you need in ancient times to start a new life. Now, um, when the Greek army under Alexander's control gets to Persopolis, a lot of them want to destroy the city. And they're like saying to Alexander, we need to destroy this. And Alexander at first is like, no, I'm a conqueror. I want to keep control of this. Well, Alexander has a lot to drink that night. And in his drunkenness, the soldiers also had a lot to drink in celebrating their victory over Persopolis. They convince Alexander, 
let us burn down Persopolis. So his soldiers burned down Persopolis to the ground. And the reason they did it is it was revenge for when the Persians burned Athens to the ground in the Persian War. So unfortunately, due to Alexander and his soldiers' drunken night of celebration, we don't know a lot about Persopolis because a lot of it burned up thanks to these soldiers. All right, so that is the Alexander fill in the blank notes part two. We're now going to move on to this set of notes that I'm calling Alexander the Great, Alexander the Not So Great. So this is a chart I have back and forth. So I'm going to kind of highlight 